Hello, everybody. Great to see you. We thought we'd do this. We're getting so many questions on the building itself, how it's coming. And uh, there's a great speaker system, boy. It's unbelievable. Uh, and I just uh, want to thank everybody for, for coming. We have had so many inquiries as to how we're doing uh, at the old post office, what was formerly the old post office. And uh, upstairs is almost complete. The rooms are almost complete. We have close to 300 rooms, super luxury, and it's going to be amazing. We're going to apply, we're going to employ uh, substantially more than, uh, I would say, 500 people. Yeah, at least 500 people. And we're getting them largely from the area, and they're terrific already in training. Uh, our chefs have been employed. Our service staff has been fully employed. So we have a tremendous group of uh, people. The hotel is going to be incredible. Much of what you're sitting on was just that was open space that was going down into a basement area that's a brand new floor. Uh, in about a week, it gets covered with marble, beautiful marble from different parts of the world. Uh, much of what you're seeing here gets the final uh, touches on it. This was considered one of the great buildings of Washington, one of the great buildings in the country, and it's been restored to the highest level, uh, well beyond from when it was built, and it's going to be something really special. I think when it's completed, it will be truly one of the great hotels of the world, and that's what we're looking forward to. Uh, as you know, uh, GSA, this was a GSA, and that was one of the most heavily bid projects ever in the history of GSA. Tremendous numbers of people wanted it. They brought it down to 10 finalists, and we got it, I think, because of the strength of our financial statement and because of the fact that they wanted to make sure it got built and because of the fact that we had something that's very special in terms of the concept. Uh, where you are now is going to be part of the hotel lobby. You'll see that in about uh, three months. And uh, behind me are restaurants and stores and shops, and everything above the second floor is, uh, is rooms, suites, luxury suites. And what we have really that's very exciting is we're building one of the biggest ballrooms in Washington, and by far the most luxurious ballroom. It's actually the largest luxury ballroom in Washington, and even in the Washington area. So it's going to be a very, very special job. We're very proud of it. We're two years ahead of schedule. We're going to be opening in September. So that's much uh, in advance of what it was supposed to be. It was supposed to be September two years from now. Uh, we're right on budget. Uh, we have, and we've really increased the scope of the work quite a bit. We're still on budget. Uh, we've gone to a very much higher degree of finishes and uh, marbles and uh, fixtures and bathroom fixtures, windows, etc. So we are uh, really, we want to make this one of the great hotels of the world. I think it's coming out that way. And I think when it's completed, you'll be very proud of it. It's a great thing for the country. It's a great thing for Washington. As you know, the building was sitting fallow for many, many decades, actually, but it was for many years. Uh, it was a magnificent building. There were tremendous fights as to whether or not it would stay up, and groups got together, and they just would not allow the government to take it down, and it sat, and then they went out to bid, and something happened where it didn't work out, and it's been many, many years. So uh, we started it uh, about a year and a half ago, and we'll have it finished way ahead of schedule. We're very proud of it. I think, again, you will, you will be very proud of it. As people that love this country, I think you're going to be very proud of it. Uh, these are just some of the staff that we have, some of the construction workers. We'll have probably really close to 1,000 construction workers on the site, including off-site work. For instance, uh, the windows, which are landmarked. Much of the building is landmarked. This area is all landmarked. Uh, the walls going up are landmarked. The struts over your head right now are land. You know, it's all a very strong landmark situation. Uh, we worked with the various landmarking groups who were terrific, really, really professional people, and uh, they are they love this building. I can tell you, the exterior of the building is all granite, and in some cases it's four and five feet thick, and they don't build them like that anymore. That I can tell you, they don't build them like that anymore. So, with that all being said, if you have any questions, please uh, raise your hand. Yes. Tell us a little bit more about this meeting at Jones Day earlier today. Meeting at Jones Day. Oh, that has nothing to do with this, but that's okay. We met with uh, uh, Senator Sessions and some of the great people in Washington, and you pretty much know who was there, I would imagine. And we had a great meeting. We had a really good meeting. For those who don't know, would you uh, yeah, well, I don't have a list, uh, but we various, various senators, yeah, various senators and congressmen 
uh, we can provide a list for you if you'd like, okay? Uh, Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan didn't know about the meeting. They said they weren't invited. Was uh, that on purpose? Was no, that not at all. No, not at all. We're very inclusive. And uh, frankly, uh, Jeff and some of the other people just invited a small group. And, you know, we're doing very well. It looks like we're doing very well in Arizona and very well pretty much every place else. And I think we're going to maybe easily make that number of the 1237. Uh, we should make it pretty easily based on what I'm seeing. So we won't have to worry about fighting at a convention. Why just a small group? Yes, Mark? Leave the past aside for a moment and look forward to a possible general election between you and Secretary Clinton. For voters, how would you just differentiate yourself from her on both issues and on style? Well, I think I'm very different than Hillary Clinton, to put it mildly. Um, I think we have a very different style. I don't think she'll be one that's going to do much with our trade agreements, which are killing our country. People have no idea how important that is. The money that is being drained out of our country is enormous, and that's not her thing. It's totally my thing. I think she'll be very, very weak on the military. I think she'll be very weak with other, frankly, with other countries and the amount of money we subsidize them with our military, which nobody even talks about. So, you know, we have to make our country solvent and we have to make our country, frankly, rich if we're going to save all these things and we have to rebuild our military. It's in very bad shape. It's been decimated, just decimated over a period of years. And we've got to get the right equipment, not the wrong equipment. We've got to get equipment that isn't there because of political experience and political know-how. We want to get the equipment they really want, not the equipment that they're getting because politicians have access to certain companies. And we're going to rebuild our military, and I think that's going to be a big difference. She also. suggested this morning that you're inconsistent when it comes to his policy related to Israel. Well, she doesn't know anything about my policy. I mean, she wouldn't know anything about it. Uh, her policies obviously didn't work. All you have to do is look at Libya, look at anything you want to look at, and they haven't worked. And I think if you look back at my projections and uh, my prognostications, they turn out to be very, very accurate. Sarah? Mr. Trump, you've said before that you need you would be neutral in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, and that Israel. Well, I'm going to make a speech in about two hours. And so. that Israel would be prepared to make would need to be prepared. Well, to no, make I, I also Do said. You stand no, I, by those comments. Yeah, I said what I said. If you remember, I said that I want to look into it. I want to speak to governmental people in Israel and here. I want to speak to various senators and various people, including Senator Jeff Sessions, who's highly. Jeff is highly respected, and uh, actually, uh, Ted Cruz, I think, respected him more than any senator, and he thought he was going to get endorsed by Jeff Sessions, and he didn't. Jeff Sessions endorsed me, which was a very big endorsement, and uh, Ted Cruz still doesn't believe what happened. He couldn't believe it, because they worked together. And, you know, it doesn't say much about somebody when you have almost no Senate endorsements. You have Lee, but you have almost no Senate endorsements, and you work with the people all the time. So. Uh, we worked very, very closely with uh, many people, but Jeff Sessions. We worked closely with top people from Israel, and I'm going to be making a speech about it in a little while. So should we expect you to say your views on this have evolved in this? Say it again. Should we expect you to say your views on this have evolved? Not so much this? evolved. I said I want to make, you know, before I was asked certain questions. I said I want to make a decision. I'll announce it in the not-too-distant future, and that's what I'm going to do today at about 5 o'clock. Okay? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, you mentioned the air. Oh, Go ahead. Um, I'm a 9-11 survivor Iraq and Afghanistan veteran. I love the policy that you have for the military. Thank I you. Want, I wanted to know if Trump Towers would be part of that veteran job. Are you talking about here? Yes. And be we, open we are doing some of that actually already. Okay. We have it very much involved. Why? What are you looking for? What kind of a position? Uh, Come up here. Come here. <laughs> she looks so smart. Good. Do you mind if I do a job interview right now? We need good people. How are you? So what's your experience in front of the world? Uh, well, I design, I do wreaths, I do uh, all types of decorations. And you like this building? Yes, Okay. I do. So here's what I'm going to do. There's the man. Stand right over here. If we can make a good deal in the salary, she's going to probably have a job, okay? Have a good time. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you. Okay. So nice. Really nice. Yes, go ahead. Two questions for you. Firstly, can you talk about what was the aim, what was the goal of the meeting this morning at Jones Day? Uh, just to start uh, getting together with some of the people that I've known over the years, uh, politicians, uh, 
in just about all cases, uh, they were senators or congressmen. Uh, Jim DeMint was there, who I have great respect for, and uh, some others. And we just had a really good meeting. It's just a meeting, and they, they can't believe how far we've come. Because, you know, I think a lot of people maybe wouldn't have predicted that. I think people that know me did predict that. But some people would not have. And it was really just a meeting. It's a beginning meeting. But it was a very good one with a lot of the most respected people in Washington. And then let me ask, you heard a little bit about what Hillary Clinton said this morning in her comments to AIPAC. Also, Elizabeth Warren today on social media went after you, calling you a loser. How are you going? Are you Who's that, the Indian? You mean the Indian? Um, are you prepared to deal with that kind of sustained attack from both sides? I, 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 look, look, it's very simple. I have more votes than anybody. And if you take away the fact that I had 17 people we had 17 people that I was going against and add some of that back. You know, Hillary essentially had one. Uh, we started off with 17. I had more votes than anybody. More votes have come in the primaries to me than anybody else. And, you know, the problem with the country right now, it's so divided. And people like Elizabeth Warren really have to get their act together because it's going to stay divided. And that includes Hillary and probably includes me, includes everybody. This country has to get together because we're in serious trouble. We're sitting on a big, fat financial bubble. We owe $19 trillion, and it's going up rapidly to $21 trillion because of the budget. And we have a military that needs money. We have everything that needs money. And we have, to, we have health care that doesn't work. Obamacare is not working. Nothing works. Our educational system, we're ranked last in many cases. Um, so everybody has to get together and get it solved. If they don't get together, we're not going to have much of a country. So. Mr. Trump, at your rally in North Carolina, Pastor Mark Burns was on stage, and he told the audience um, that Bernie Sanders doesn't believe in Jesus and that he needs to have uh, come to Jesus. That was Pastor Burns? Yes. Yeah, I didn't hear this. When did he say this? This was uh, last week in North Carolina. I didn't Carolina. hear anything about it. No, do, you, do you agree well, with Well, let me find out comment? about it. I, I don't know anything about his religious beliefs, honestly, but I will find out, OK? I know the pastor. And he's, you know, a very respected person. Yes. Mr. I Trump, what, what we just witnessed here was pretty remarkable. I mean, this is a complete stranger who just came up and you offered her a job. What, what, what inside your gut gave you the feeling that I you felt good her about her. her? I tell you what, I looked at her. I said, she, you know, I have gut instinct, okay? And we're allowed to have that. And I looked at her and she asked a question and it was a very positive question. She looks like she's got a great look and she's, look at that with the tears. How nice. She's just a good, she just seemed like a good person to me. Just seemed like a good person to me. Now, maybe she won't qualify because you have to qualify for, but I think she will. I think she, to me, looked like a good person. I have instincts about people. For instance, I had an instinct about you originally that you're a very fine reporter, and I was right, okay? No, I, I, she made an immediate impression. And while I agree it's a big audience, she's gonna become a superstar. Tomorrow she'll move out to Hollywood. Look at her. Don't leave me. Okay, go ahead, yes. Uh, Mr. Trump, before South Carolina, you said that if you won, you could possibly run the table. And and that hasn't happened, and there are still two people in this race. Well, I've done a lot of winning. I mean, give me a break. On uh, Super Tuesday, I won four out of five and did really well in Ohio. And if I would have had two more days in Ohio, I would have won it. So have you, but have you changed anything to try to run the table for the rest of the primary? All we're doing is our thing. We have a lot of people calling. We have so many people calling, and in terms of delegates, a lot of the delegates that you're hearing about want to come with us. They want to come with us. I think we're going to get a lot of delegates. And people see, you know, some people are saying we're going to be at 1450, quite a bit higher. We'll see. I mean, look, hey, the worst that happens, I go back to this, which isn't so bad, you know, not so bad. But I think we're doing very, very well, and I think we will uh, qualify over that number. And then a decision is going to have to, I mean, if we're 30 short or 50 short, nobody else is going to be close. I mean, Ted Cruz won't even be close. And if we're a little bit short, people are going to have to decide, are you going to go with somebody? And remember this, I think this is important. When I was putting my delegates together, I had, I guess we started, there must have been 12 or 14 people in the race. It wasn't like I was running against one or two people, because that's easy to put together, you know, the 1,237 delegates. But I had senators, I had a great doctor, I had uh, Carly, and I had many, many other people running. 
So I was doing well. I was leading the pack in almost all cases. But you had other people getting 5% and 10% and 14%. We had a massive feel. 